Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salah Khan here. And today, most probably the last topic before the midterm exams. And that is the block diagram representation. So I missed representation. Okay. So block diagram representation of systems described by the differential in continuous time, difference equation, different in the discrete time. So now you know what a block diagram is. Okay. What is a block diagram? It is a picked pictorial view right you see a picture of the system that is the block diagram you know what differential equation is you know what difference equation is so you know everything what the topic means we'll get into it so we've seen differential equations and difference equations previously why do we need the block diagram so you know you you know about something and you see it in a picture in a picture in a pictorial form you get to understand it better so that is what the concept of this topic is. The idea behind this topic is to see a pictorial view of the system and we will have something derived from it, an important property we will be using of convolution and we will have something very important, a result we will be deriving at the end. So the basic introduction to this topic is that we want to have a pictorial view of the, of the equation of the system. Fine. Now block diagram is what? It's the picture, right? And you know uh, what a block diagram is, you have um, seen it in, in your previous semesters in electronics courses as well, that uh, we did it in operational amplifiers and something like that, okay? So you have the basic idea. So we would now be requiring some basic building blocks first. So let me discuss those basic building blocks. First of all, we have to know the basics to it, right? So, out of the basic building blocks, let's say the first that we say is the adder. So what would the adder do? What would the adder do? It is represented by a plus in circle. It is given one input, let's say x1 of n of t, that's not the case. It's given another input x2, it could be given multiple inputs, let's say dealing with 2, starting with 2. The output of the system, is the output of the adder is x1 plus x2. This is the basic first building block. The second, if we say, is the multiplier. Multiplier. So, how do you have it? The multiplier, you have an input x and you have the, the multiplier is represented now with an arrow. So you, you multiply this thing by let's say a constant a. So the output is a times the input that is x. So this a is the multiplication factor. Fine. The third we could say is the delay. delay so the third is delay or you can say in this particular case it's a unit delay so if you have your signal x of n or you have an x of t or whatever it is you give it to a delay which is represented by a block written in it is d you have at the output is x of n minus y fine so this you can say is also the difference this is the unit delay or this is the first difference right so this is for the uh, discrete time case now in the in the continuous time case you have the derivative you have the derivative so this derivative is also represented by the same d you have x of t you give it to the de differentiator this is a differentiator, okay? Not a derivative. I've written the name of this block is a differentiator, so you do correct it, please. And over here you have the derivative of this x of t. So this is the next basic block. The next is integrator, and it would be again. So let me, you know, uh, uh, correct this myself because I may forget it while reading. So that would not be good. So the four that I discussed, this is differentiator, which does what? Oh, I think the cloth was, was, was what? Was wet. So differentiator would take the derivative and the next is that you have is the 
integrator. So now the integrator does what? You know it very well. You have an input x, it you give it to an integrator, this is an integration sign, it would take the integration from a negative infinity to up to some value t, and let's say I write it x of tau and d tau. So these are some basic building blocks. Now we move directly into some simpler examples and then going through them we go to some complex ones and then we conclude our discussion. So the first example let's say uh, is over here that y of n plus a times y of n plus a times y of n minus 1 is equal to b times x of n. So whenever you are given this sort of a question, whenever you are given to write to draw the block diagram, what you do is you take the output on one side and you do and you take all the other terms to the other side. So over here the output is y of n, y of n minus 1 is the previous output, x of n is the input, whatever it is, we know that our output is y of n. So y of n we take to one side. Y of n we take to this side and the others to the other. So b times x of n and then you have a minus a times y of n minus 1. So now this thing we would take, this is the equation that we have to draw the block diagram for. Is that fine? Now what do you do? You take your input at one side x of n is represented at one side find this input is coming and you take your y of n at the final side x of n is given y of n is the output in between these two in between these two we have to do the rest operations so now we do the rest operations and let me take the colors for it so the first operation is you know the number of operations that are involved is constant multiplication b to this a to this and then you have a delay that is y of n minus 1 and then you have what? You have an addition between those two. Fine. So what do you do? Let's say first I have b times x of n. So what would I do is that this is your uh, x of n is coming. You multiply it with a b. So which means that now at this particular point you have your b times x of n. This is b times x of n. Now what do you have? You have y of n minus 1. So I would take this y of n and I would give it to a delay. So over here I have this y of n minus 1 now. Now what do you have? I would multiply with the negative of a. So now this is coming like this. And this has been multiplied now with a constant that is negative of a. Now what do you have? So over here have a look. You have a negative of a times y of n minus 1. Over here you have b times x of n. Now you have to add them together. So what do I do? I, I place an adder over here. And I give them these two. This is the first to this, this is the second to this, and this is my final output. The sum of this is my final output. So that's the pictorial form of this system. So have a look. Isn't this the feedback system that we have seen in the digital logic design? If anybody of you have studied DLD with me, or not with me, you have your DLD course, you have studied it, you know what a feedback circuit is. We have mainly seen it, you know, in the DLD circuits. You take some part of the output, you pass it through some operation, you don't pass it, you give it directly. Over here, you have passed it to two operations and then you provide it with the input. That is your feedback system in which your output is getting involved. So this is an example of that feedback system. So this is the first example that the book has written. The second the second is now, in the continuous time case, the derivative of 
y of t plus a times y of t is equal to b times x of t. Now again what I told you is that you have to take the y of t to one side and you have to take all the other terms to the other side. So over here this is my y of t so I would take y of t this would be equal to b times x of t and then what would be the case uh, then you would have a minus the derivative of the derivative of y of t and this would hold be multiplied with a 1 over a 1 over a isn't it like this? it is so now what do you have? the first you know you have again two operations you have your constant multiplication you have your the derivative of the output you have to sum these two and then you have to multiply it with an a so have a look again what do you do is you give your x of t at one side this is your x of t incoming you have your output y of t it is outgoing these are the two signals now what do you do is you have to multiply x of t with a b so this is my multiplication factor b so over here i would have what i would have a b times x of t over here i would have a b times x of t this is done right then you do what you have to take the derivative of y of t so over here let me take the derivative of y of t i would take this and i would give it to the differentiator so over here i would have the derivative of y of t now what do you have? I have to multiply it with a minus 1 to add them of course so, so what do you do? Now this is coming and this is multiplied somewhere over here this is multiplied with a minus 1 so have a look what do you have? over here you have a b times x of t over here you have a negative of the derivative of y of t you have to add them together now so what do I do is I add them together I add them together so this would be the case now we have got till this particular point now what do you have you have to multiply this whole thing with a 1 over a to get to your output so here I am I am getting to my output but what do I have to do first I have to multiply this whole thing with a 1 over a so this is the block diagram representation of this particular system now uh, the book has written a point over here the book has written a point over here and what is that that this is a valid representation you know this is a valid representation but it is not more frequently used or it is not that leads directly to physical implementation so which means that we do not use this circuit now why so it's written the reason since differentiators are both difficult to implement and extremely sensitive to errors and noise so that is the reason the differentiators are difficult to implement and they are also sensitive to errors and noise so what do we do we we draw the same circuit using what using a using an integrator so this we did what this we did using a differentiator right now in the next case what do we have we, we draw it using an integrator so in that case what do you do you take this equation and you take the highest order derivative to one side and you take the other terms to the other side so which means that now over here this equation would imply what the highest order derivative is taken to one side that is the derivative which is the first order so first order uh, first derivative the derivative of y of t and this is equal to what uh, b times x of t and then what do you have minus a times y of t fine and yes so now you do what you integrate these so when you integrate and you differentiate so this would cancel out now how this cancels out so we would say it in a rough language that integration cancels out with differentiation but there is a proper rule it does not cancel out you know it from your calculus how it cancels out how am I saying that it cancels out 
So y of t, this would be equal to now the integration of from negative infinity to let's say some value t and I would represent this by a dummy variable tau fine this is with tau and now I would uh, I would get this into brackets and this is my data so now this is the equation that I have to implement with this so what would I have to do again x of t you take your x of t at one side this is your incoming signal your outgoing signal is this which is y of t fine now what do you have you have a b times x of t involved so this is your b so you would have a b times x of t over here fine now what is involved a times minus a times y of t so this is coming let's say multiply with a minus a so minus a times y of t b times x of t and these two are added together these two are added together and then they are they are what they are integrated so then they are integrated and this is my final output that is what y of t so let me check and yes it's fine so this is the first order systems that I have made. So let me continue my this discussion for the nth order system in the next video because if I continue it over here so the video would get very longer and then it would get boring for you guys. So see you in the next lecture very soon till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.